awesome God, mighty God, awesome God. Happy birthday, Brother Chris. We all love you over here. Appreciate you for everything that you have done for us. God bless you. I just want to say happy birthday to you, Brother Chris, and God Richard bless you. Happy birthday, Brother Chris. I just want to say happy birthday. We love you. Everybody loves you in the church, and we can't wait to see you come in the surprise. God bless you, Brother Chris. We are here to celebrate your birthday. You know how much we love you. We are here because of you. Live long. God bless. Happy, happy birthday, Brother Chris. Celeste Veronique, I wish you all the best. More years to come. More, more years. Amen. God bless you so much, Pastor Chris. We are here to celebrate you. I want you to know how much you're loved. We appreciate you so much. Happy, happy birthday. Chris, I didn't realize you were that young. And I'm so grateful you invited us. Have a happy birthday. Hi, Chris. Happy birthday. Um, we've known you for so long, and uh, I'm so glad uh, your friendship is true, uh, true and true throughout the years. So it's really a pleasure to know you, both you and Bami, and I wish you uh, many more uh, birthdays to come uh, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Hi Chris, uh, happy birthday. Uh, uh, we wish you all the best in this new phase and we're happy to be here celebrating with you. God bless. Congratulations. Okay Chris, this is to wish you very best of your 60th birthday, many more, and happy returns. Go ahead, wake up man. Hey, happy birthday brother Chris. This is Tosan, wishing you a very, very blessed happy birthday. Today, May it remind you of the love that each and every one of us have for you. And may it bring more of God's glory unto you in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Surprise! Hi Chris, happy birthday. This is Vivian. Um, may you have many more and I love you. Brother Chris, happy birthday to you from Benga and Lola. We love you. You are the great. We, you know, we thank God for your life. We thank God for what God is doing in your life. You know, you've been serving God for so long. And God never forgets you. You are blessed. And we pray that you for more grace, more strength, with long life. You will live to see 120 years if Jesus tarry. You and your wife, Sister Bami and Jedidiah, and even all the children that's coming. God bless you. We love you. I'm hand over to my wife, Lola. Amen. Happy birthday, Brother Chris. We thank God for the faithfulness of God in your life. You and uh, Sister Bami and Jedidiah, you are blessed. And we're so happy to be associated with you. We thank God and wish you many, many, many more healthy life and long life and prosperity in Christ Jesus. We thank God for the new addition, Jedidiah. And may he continue to grow in grace, grow in the nature and nurture of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you. We love your friendship. We appreciate Christ in you. God bless you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, Chris. Um, wishing you the very best and more healthy years in Jesus' name. This is with love from St. Louis, Missouri. Evelyn and Deji, Remy and Feromi. God bless you. Brother Chris, happy birthday, my brother. God bless you today. I would have flown from anywhere to come, to come here today. I could not miss this. And that age, <laughs> yeah, that's going to be very confusing to many people today. God bless you. Look forward to surprising you. Look forward to seeing your face today. And uh, Mammy, you pulled this off. Amazing. I wasn't, I'm not surprised though. God bless, guys. 
You start. You start. No, I'm not say anything. You're not going to say anything? All right. I'm going to say it because this is personal. Chris, between you and I, you're, secret, you're, you're safe with our secret. Our plan will go as we said. I will assist you with whatever you need. You just let me know. We're going to do this, right? Okay, Chris, great. Happy birthday. We love you so much. Mommy, we love you as well. Have a wonderful birthday. You deserve it. Yeah. <laughs> Ditto. All right. <laughs> Chris who? Oh. Hey, Chris. Uh, I want to say something funny, but I can't because I love you so dearly. I'm not just honored to be your friend. I'm, I'm honored to be in your presence when you're around. You're truly a good soul. I mean, you don't find too many of those on this planet. People think they're good souls, but they're not. And I, and I love you dearly, and thank you for making me part of your family. I'd like to say something. Um, Chris, you are an amazing, special person, so sweet. Um, I remember the first time Sammy met you, well, with the candy. I mean, you're just such a sweet, sweet person, and uh, I'm honored to know you. Happy birthday. Chris, I want to wish you a happy birthday. I'm so thankful that we're here today to celebrate this great day with you and your family. God bless. Happy birthday. Enjoy. Happy birthday, Chris. We wish you the happiest day ever. Happy First Father's Day as well. Brother Chris, happy, happy birthday. birthday. Uh, we wish you many more. May God richly bless you. Uh, it's been a long time. We haven't seen you, but uh, we hope God, God is keeping you. Uh, Thank you so much for inviting us. God bless you. God bless you. <laughs> Hi, Chris. Happy birthday. Thank you so much for inviting me to your wonderful party. Well, I wish you all the health and the best of your year, especially with your boy arriving. Chris, happy birthday. It's been a pleasure knowing you. You're a great guy, a great guy to talk to. Wish you many more years of happiness, health, and success. Happy birthday, Chris. Happy birthday, Chris. Um, it's such a pleasure knowing you. You're such a great man of God, and I just pray in this new age that God continues to pour his blessings on you and you further your impact in, in everyone's lives like you've been doing so far. Happy 60th. God bless. I just want to say happy birthday to Brother Chris. Wish you all the best. May God continue to favor you, and we love you from the Woods family. God bless you. God bless you, Brother Chris. Happy birthday, and may God always bless you. Happy birthday, Brother Chris. Much blessings to you and a long life. God bless. Happy birthday, Brother Chris. May God bless you and have a happy birthday. Happy birthday, Brother Chris. May God continue to bless you and we love you. Enjoy. Happy birthday, Brother Chris. We love you so much and it's such an honor to be here to celebrate your birthday with you. We are so thankful to God for your life because you have been a blessing to all of us. God bless you. Hey, Chris, you know how it is. Happy, happy birthday. You know, we're very happy to be here. I know, I know we're going to have fun today. I wish you many more years, many more blessings. I want to see you watch um, this Daya grow up to be a good young man, all right? Bami, Doc, you know I love you guys. Happy birthday, Chris, again. Hey, Chris Owanna, I, uh, I, I believe you remember today is your birthday. I'm pleased and happy to be here to wish you the most pleasant birthday and all the best in future. God, God bless you. Hey, happy birthday to Uncle Chris. You know we love you. We love you so, so much. And we are here to say a happy birthday to you. We celebrate you. We celebrate the greatness of God upon your life. You are an awesome man. You are humble. You are amazing. You are extraordinary. We want to say we are here to celebrate you big time. We love your family. We love your wife. She's organized this and it's an amazing surprise. Have a blessed day. Have a blast. We love you. Happy birthday. Hi, Chris. Happy sister's birthday. You are a good man with a good heart. And it's a good time for us to come and celebrate you. The saints in heaven are celebrating you too. So we join them to say 
have fun today, have fun all your life. We'll be back to celebrate you at 70, we'll be back to celebrate at 80, we'll be back to celebrate you at 90. I wish you happiness all your life. God bless you, God bless you. Well, Brother Chris, it's a wonderful time and we came here to celebrate with you. We wish you many happy returns. God bless you and your family. We are blessed to know you and it's been a wonderful uh, brother to us. And we just wish you a happy birthday. God bless you. Bye-bye. Well, Chris, um, before I wish you a happy birthday, I would like to tell you that I learned a very interesting fact here today. That we are birthday mates. I was also born June 16. You're slightly older than me, but that's fine. Happy birthday, Chris. I wish you the merriest, the happiest, the most refreshing birthday ever. And may God continue to bless you with many more happy, healthy years. Chris, we wish you very happy 60th birthday. Even though you look much younger, I never knew you up to 60. But I'm... Um, we wish you long life and prosperity. Continue to be humble and be the nice person that you are. And we pray that the good Lord will keep on keeping you, give you long life, unlimited prosperity, so that you continue to soar like eagle to the sky and reap from life all it has to offer to you. Happy birthday, Chris. We love you. Thank you. Happy birthday, Chris. This is Mrs. Obilo, Dr. Obilo's wife. Uh, long life and prosperity. We wish you all the best. We wish you all the happiness in the world today and for the rest of your life. Thank you. Yeah. 
into the mighty hands of our Father in heaven so that His Spirit will lead us, turn it into a blessing. Those who are coming, those who have arrived, everyone be blessed together with our precious brother on his 60th birthday. Our kind and heavenly Father, this is indeed a great day. A great day of blessing, a great day of acknowledgement, a great day of gratitude, a great day of thanksgiving for a life given to earth, a gift offered to humanity in the name of Chris Mama. By him many are blessed, by him many are fed, by him many are enlightened, and together we stand with him on this great day of his 60th birthday raising up our hands before you to give you the praise to give you the thanks to give you the honor to give you the glory for protecting his life amen lord god for see him through bad times good times tough times hardship amen in moments of depression father god he's a human being he has been through all that but your grace and mercy has prevailed the blood of jesus has prevailed for him Together we stand with the wife and the entire family. Amen. Welcoming your presence in this August house. Lord God, where we want to celebrate your goodness for your son's life. I take this opportunity to bless every food, every drink. Father God, everything that will be consummate. Lord, we pray, we pray over them and bless them so that it can edify our bodies and give us strength to worship you. And we praise this ceremony under the authority of the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Turn it into a blessing and bless us all in Jesus' name. Can we all say amen? amen. And before time, say happy birthday, Pastor Chris. Happy birthday. I understand he doesn't know nothing about it. So this is not his dressing yet. So very soon he will vanish and then come and join us. But before that, the table is now open. Go serve yourself, take your time, and we enjoy the music and everything, and then we will move on later. God bless you all. And as we say in French, bon appétit, all of you all. Put your hands together for you. Thank you. All we have to say is thank you, Lord. What shall we say unto the Lord? interesting for me to be here. I feel honored to be here today. Brother Chris, um, 
In fact, I met him maybe like 10 years ago, thereabouts. And meeting him, I, I met him just like uh, a business uh, partner. But after my meeting with him, he began to show me love. And in fact, I, I, it became an obligation to love him back. Amen? <laughs> you know, when I, I was getting more and more and more, I started learning how to also be as committed as he was to my relationship with him. And that actually shaped me into what I am today. I learned so much from him. And I was also a young Christian at the time. I was just a young pastor. And I thought I had a lot of zeal. And I knew so much. And uh, interacting with him and my relationship with him brought out um, a new understanding of what Christianity is supposed to be. I learned how to pursue my spiritual life very diligently and very with all true commitment. And I must say that he has influenced my family. He has influenced our Christian life. He has influenced our race for rapture so strongly. And today, I never knew he was up to 60 years of age. <laughs> <laughs> yes, because I'm far younger, and, but he didn't relate with me like he was this much older. In fact, he's, the last born is my friend, but he's my friend through him, being my direct friend. So I must thank God for his life, for our, our sister, Sister Bami, the family is a wonderful, accommodating family, and they are ever willing to open their doors to people, and they are ever willing to show love. So, I want to say I'm privileged to be part of today. I thank God for today. I pray to be 60 myself, if Jesus tarry. And for all of you that have come also, may God give us, by mercy, the grace to make heaven at last in Jesus' name. Thank you, thank you. Um, Dr. Bami, um, when I was invited, I thought I was coming to CHOP. So I wasn't part of, a, you, you know, that I would give a speech. Uh, but in any case, uh, it is an honor uh, to be here to say a few words about uh, my friend, uh, Chris, you know, Mama. Uh, I first met him in the late... Uh, uh, maybe in uh, 2009, <laughs> 2009. <laughs> okay, so it's been that long. Okay, so, um, and where we met is where, you know, we started a, a software company. That's how we got to meet. And uh, once you know Chris, there are a few things, you know, you need to know about him. His work ethics, he's a workaholic. You know, when he starts, he doesn't stop. And then uh, his love, you know, for God. Okay, so those two attributes will actually touch you a lot. Okay, I can go on and on and on, but I'm going to try to kind of, uh, you know, make it short. So since then, we become quite a good friend. Uh, Chris is somebody that you can call upon. Okay, it's, I, I always tell people he's my best friend. And he's so, you know, not even a friend anymore. He's like a brother to me, okay, because he is that close. You can call upon him, and if you have issue, you can talk through issue with him. It doesn't matter what it is. You know, his advice is so valuable. He's somebody that you can always count on, that if you seek advice from him, that he's going to try to help to guide you in the right direction. Um... Uh, concerning church, you know, his love for God, you know, first thing Chris will do for you, he will, he will try to take you to church. Okay? So, and uh, he will try to, you know, make sure that you, you know, that you are saved, okay, in your, you know, uh, in your life as a Christian. 
and uh, I truly appreciate him. I went to church a couple of times with him, you know, to Pastor uh, Frank's, uh, you know, church, and, uh, and I met a whole bunch of, you know, people through that, uh, you know, relationship. Um, yeah, so to make the, you know, long story short, okay, uh, uh, Chris and Bami, they have actually been so close to my family, and I truly appreciate, you know, getting to know him, I truly you know, appreciate you know, having him as a friend, and, uh, and I will always say uh, um, to people around me that this is a brother uh, from a different uh, you know, uh, parents. Thank you. Chris, forgive me for repeating myself. You know this story, but I just told the story of how we met, and I think it's a, a good thing that I say it today. Over 20 years ago, I was, I was starting out in business and, uh, and I was looking for someone to help me with my programming. And Chris and Chuck Woody were working at a school at the time. And I walk into his office and this was a miracle. I said, where are you from? And he said, Nigeria. And I looked at him and I said, you're not from Nigeria, you're from Biafra, okay? You laugh. How, how, do, how do I know about Biafra? How do I know he's from Biafra? How is any of this possible? Sorry, Mr. <laughs> we don't know. Why did I say that? How did that come out? The last thing I knew about Biafra, I was seven years old. By the way, we are the same age. Chris is, Chris is much older than me. Two months. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> so, so we were about the same age. And... Uh, and I remembered that when we were young in school. And really, ever since then, we're like this. And uh, I've come to know him now for tw over 20 years as a man, uh, a very spiritual person, as a good, kind-hearted, you can't even kid around with him about, you know, cursing or anything like that. He just won't have any, it's not funny to him. <laughs> Maybe now. And then, uh, I've been blessed with three kids, and uh, you know, being the same age, we always talked about you know having kids, and uh, forever there was none. And I didn't bother him about it for the last twenty years. <laughs> and then, uh, then, then, then the miracle of miracles, Jedediah happens. It's uh, it's quite an incredible story. I mean, I mean, is there any better gift in life? I I don't think so, and. Um, I just want to tell you that I love you. That's it, in the truest sense of the words, and I respect you. And Bami, you're part of that. Um, you know, thank you for being, thank you for being here for my friend, always. You know, and, and here, everybody, the way, the way they talk about Chris, like he's a holy man, except Bami. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> but in any case, I just want to say thank you for considering me and my family and working together wonderfully all these years. It's been a wonderful relationship. I love you, thank you. Chris is, uh, Chris is uh, my brother-in-law. That's the, that's the long and short. So, and uh, we met many years ago though. He took me in and he and I will became, you know, friends before he got married to my sister though. Anyways, he didn't have any choice. He had to like me so he can get there. So. <laughs> so, but he's been a great, great friend and a big brother. I have so many words to say about him, but he's always been an example to me. And the love is always shown and even the, the, the respect, mutual respect, everything has been very wonderful. So that was not one day, uh, when we were back in Nigeria, that we would not we would not see each other, you know. So it was always like that, and we've been like that since then up till now. We still hold the same relationship. We're talking about maybe it's over before they got married. They, they got married maybe I think in '94, right? So so that means we've known ourselves for is it up to 30 years. I can't do the math anymore. <laughs> So, but uh, it's really wonderful having him as a brother-in-law. 
and he has been there for all of us, and we love him so much, and I love him very much, and I appreciate my sister, too. God bless you all. Chris and I met 15 years ago. When Chris stepped out on faith beside me and sold me his laundromat, it was my lifelong dream since I was nine years old. I asked Chris to meet me at 12 o'clock, and he was there five minutes to 12. I had to convince my husband that this was the place for us. And my, Chris said to my husband, are you sure? Because she sure had a long story about how she wanted a laundromat. My husband said to him, you don't know the half of it. My husband passed away three years ago, 25 years married. And he left me with something. He said to me, don't you make any business decisions without talking to Chris first. Chris asked my husband on his dying bed, what is the one thing that you're concerned about? And my husband said, my wife. He said, I'm going to trust you with my wife. My wife will not do anything without consulting you first. Just take care of her. Chris, my husband is smiling down from heaven because you have been taking care of me since the day he passed. I will be forever grateful for the friendship and the relationship that I have with you and your entire family. I already nicknamed myself the daughter you never gave birth to even though I'm older than you. <laughs> With all my heart, from here to eternity, I love you. I appreciate you. And I'm so, so grateful to have you in my life. God bless you today and always. Well, where do I begin? Um, I am Brother Chris's, AKA Papa Bear's adopted daughter, or daughter. Um, Brother Chris took me in with no regrets. He took me in as a daughter, and he treats me like his own daughter. And I am so appreciative of him. He's such a wonderful and open-hearted guy. He has blessed me so much with so many things. He, he has just his words alone to comfort me every single time. When I have anything going on, I can always go to him and he will always Give me the right advice, and I feel so much better with that. They are so good to me. I mean, I don't know what, how I can even thank them for everything that they gave me. But to Brother Chris, God bless you so much. God put you here for a reason. Thank you. God put you here for a reason. And it's to bless every single one of us that's in this room, including myself. And we thank you. I love you so much. I, I don't tell you, but, you know, I guess my action does, but I don't tell you as much. I don't tell Sister Bami as much, but I really do. And I really, really appreciate you. God bless you. Guess who is next? Mrs. Chris Bami. Let's put our hands together and welcome the main person behind the big man. You see, behind every big man, there's a big woman. Put your hands together for Bami. Thank you, thank you. Thank you all. Thank you so much for coming. Really, I appreciate every one of you for taking time out on a Saturday morning. You know, everyone was like, why are you doing this on a Saturday morning? I say, it's a surprise. <laughs> it's a surprise, you know, but really, um, God has been so good to us. 
Um, the reason I decided to do this was because, you know, in Chris, when I asked him on his birthday, I said, honey, what do you want us to do for your birthday? Nothing. I don't want anybody in this house. I don't want anything. That's the way. I don't want, no, 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 no. Because he knows me. I don't want you planning anything. I said, okay. You know? I said, okay, no problem. So I just got my family and we ordered a, you know, bought, ordered a cake and a few, you know, we had dinner at home and he was happy. He didn't know I was planning this. <laughs> but I needed to do this because you, know, you people may not have known, but last year he almost died. Um, he had a, a biopsy, prostate biopsy done and he was bleeding the whole day and nobody, and he, he didn't tell me, we didn't know. So by the evening, he said, oh, you know, I've been bleeding. And I looked at him, he looked pale. I said, do you want me to call the ambulance? He said, yes. When he said yes, I knew something was wrong because he would never say yes, call the ambulance. You know, guys, they're, they're tough, right? Guys will never say call the ambulance until they're dying. Right? <laughs> right? Right? <laughs> so, you know, we called the, I called the ambulance and... By the time the ambulance came, he was almost really passing out. But thank God for Sister Tina at home with me and with my medical uh, skill, you know, we try, I tried to keep him uh, 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 alert and awake. Then when the ambulance came, I asked, I said, please, please, I need uh, a pulse oximeter. Let's check, uh, check his oxygen. When we checked his oxygen, it was low. And so, fortunately, no, it's actually the policeman came first. When they came, we checked his uh, O2 sat. It was very low. So, thank God, they ran downstairs and they got uh, oxygen for him. And then they put the oxygen on him. We rushed him to the hospital. He was in the hospital. And thank God, by the time we got there, the bleeding had stopped. They kept him for a couple of days. But, so, that was last year during the COVID, you know. And then I thought about it and I said, you know, what... I don't want to wait till he dies to have people come and then they tell all kinds of stories about this person. No, let's celebrate life. Let's all celebrate life. You know, we always focus, I mean, God's so good to us. Every day we wake up, it's a gift from God. And we have to spend our energy to celebrate each other in our families. Children, celebrate your parents. Parents, celebrate your, your kids. Friends, celebrate each other. Instead of fighting and arguing, because you know one thing this, that, that taught me? I almost lost him. I almost did. We almost did. But thank God we didn't. And I said, this is an opportunity for me to celebrate this milestone in his life. And I thank everybody for coming. Chris is a wonderful man. He supports me in everything I do. I am an achiever kind of person. You know, I don't know, it's like you can't stop me. I don't know where I got that spirit from, but that's the kind of person I am. And everything I do, is I do it way beyond anything. That's just me, okay? But one thing with him is, I'll say, okay, honey, I'm going to take my fellowship exam. Okay, what do I have to do to support you? I have to study, okay, so he will do all the cooking. He will help me clean. He will do whatever it takes. When I come back from work, go study, go study. He never fusses, he never complains. Whether I have food ready or not, he will just go to the refrigerator, get the food, prepare it for himself. You know, he is a jewel of a husband, really, he is. He is, a, there's no man like him, okay? He is such a blessing to me. He's very understanding. You, no matter what I do, I'm sorry I'm taking your time, but I have to tell him this because I don't get a chance to do it. You know, no matter what I am involved in, he's there, what are you doing this? And I tell him, I explain my goals to him. Okay. Then we, he gives me his advice and counsel, and then he supports me. He's right there in the background, but he's right there. So we, for everything that I've been able to achieve in this country, it's because of him, his support, his push. His advice, you know, and everything. He is the person that has made me who I am today. Spiritually, every way, you know, career-wise, emotionally, everything. So I really want to thank him, honey.
Thank you so much for always being there for me, for being the best husband that I could have ever wished for. And I'm so glad I waited to get married to you, to the man that God sent to me. I remember when I graduated, everyone was like, you're a dentist, you're not going to find a good, a good husband. But I said, and then they said, oh, and you're a Christian, you don't even have a boyfriend. So I said, if I serve God and I believe God, God will send me the man that he wants for me. And I'll wait for him. And I waited. I waited and I said that any man that was, would not come to me because I'm a dentist or because I'm successful, it's not worthy to be my husband. You know, and thank God, God, I waited, God sent him to me. You know, we met in the strangest ways. And thank God we've been together all these years. He's, I wanted, a, I wanted a, a godly man. I wanted somebody who loved God more than he could love me. And I'm glad I got somebody who loved God more than he loves me. And I'm so thankful for that. Because to me, I think that's the secret behind, every, behind a good marriage. It's a man who fears the Lord with his heart and he will stay faithful to his wife. And he's been faithful and I'm grateful for that. So thank you so much, honey. Thank you, everybody, for coming here. I know I don't talk much usually. I'm talking more than I usually do, right, Jerry? <laughs> I normally don't say anything. But I really, really appreciate every single one of you. Everyone. You are all a blessing to us. You've been a support. You know, last minute, some of you, those are flew in from outside the country, other states, everywhere. City, I love you guys, man. I really do. You have been... Uh, you don't know it, but if not for CD, I would probably not be here. Because when I had to go to school, you know, and then when I graduated, I decided to start my practice. Why? Because Chris had a job with Jerry. Then he wasn't even part of CD yet, right, Jerry? He was just doing programming for you. But that contract was the reason we could start our practice. That was what anchored us while we were struggling, when the practice was struggling and growing. So that support we've had with CD. Has, till this day, we always say, thank God for CT. We always say that because that constant string of income gave us the ability for me to do all the things that I've been able to do and all the business ventures and my entrepreneurial spirit and everything is because I have, we had a steady income coming from CT. Thanks, Jerry. Really do. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you all, thank you all my friends. Thank you all our family. Our brethren, Usuka, everybody, thank you so, so, so much. We love you all. Oh, and one more thanks to Lou. Thank you so much, Lou. Oh, Ron, everybody has put these things together. Brother Kunle, God bless you. Coming from Georgia. Isn't he awesome? He's the best. He's the best. Thank you so much. Jamal, thank you. Brother Frank, our papa, we bless you. Thank you so much. Thank you all for coming. God bless. Enjoy all, everything that we have to do today. Amen. Am I a good MC? Put your hands together for your MC. And for your event, I don't charge. It's free, okay? It's my turn. I'm here to say just one word about Chris. By the grace of God, he's a child of God just as I am and just as you are. And God allows Christians to cross path, especially before the foundation of the world. That's how he planned it. And he always makes sure it comes to pass that way. So about 20 plus years, we crossed path. And since that day till now, we are bonded. And this is more than flesh and blood. Let's put our hands together for Jesus. I've known Chris not as much as the wife, not as much as close, relation, close relations, but I've known him as a brother. We've served on the same altar. We've preached the same gospel. Until now, we're holding on to the same Christian values. Chris is someone who is so serious about his faith. And we thank God for men like that who can take a stand for the word of God. 
And God will always stand behind those people. We thank God that last year during the COVID, while everybody was home, we, even did, we heard the word that Chris is sick. But we did not get to know the extent that he nearly died. We thank God. God has a work for him to do. And it cannot be aborted. It cannot be premature. The Lord has spared his life. So we bless God for this day that he's alive, that we are here celebrating his sixth year together. I have this scripture here from Psalms of David 118, verse 17, that I want to sing with you. It's easy to sing. Mus uh, musician, help me out. It says, let's all say, I shall not die. Hey, it is your life. If you want to die, don't say nothing. Say, I shall, I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. That's all the song. It goes, I, sh I, sh I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. Amen. That's it, that's it. Oh, I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. Amen. Come on, join me. Join me, join me now. I shall not die, but live and declare the glory of God. Amen. I want to hear you singing. Oh, I shall not die. But live and declare the works of the Lord. Amen. One more time. One more time. Oh yeah, I shall not die. But live and declare the works of the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. If I will entitle just a brief word that I have for Chris on this special day. I will entitle it Unique in Creation. Can we all say unique in creation? I want you to understand that you are unique. You see, the earth population is telling us that we are about 7.7 .7 billion people living on the face of the earth. But the good thing is everyone is unique. Nobody matches your fingerprint. Not even identical twins have the same fingerprint. Isn't God awesome? So look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, you are unique. And look at Chris and tell Chris, Chris, you are unique in creation. Amen. Tell your neighbor, I am one of my own kind. And tell Chris, Chris, you are one of your own kind. I just want to be brief because we'll be singing, you know, or we'll be dancing. I've known Chris, as I said, for over 20 years. And one day, we were having fellowship, and he told me his favorite psalm. And that's what I want to read for him on this special day of his life. Praise the Lord. I don't want to ask him, but he knows. It's Psalms of David 139. Psalms of David 139. And Chris, take every line with amen as I read. It says, Oh Lord, you have searched me thoroughly and have known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up, my entire life, everything I do, you understand my thought from afar. You scrutinize my path and my lying down, and you are intimately acquainted with all my ways. Even before there is a word on my tongue still unspoken, 
Behold, O oh Lord, you know it all. Those of you who are following me and it's not the same, I love the amplified version because it breaks things down. Very, very, very easy to understand. Amen. Verse 5. You have enclosed me behind and before. And you have placed your hand upon me. Such infinite knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is too high above me. I cannot reach it. Where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, there you are. If I make my bed in Sheol, the nether world, the place of death, behold, you are there. If I take the wings of the dawn, if I dwell in the remotest part of the sea, even there, your hand will lead me and your right hand will take a hold of me. I, if I say, surely, the darkness will cover me and the night will be the only light around me. Even in the darkness, even the darkness is not dark to you and conceals nothing from you. But the night shines as bright as the day. Darkness and light are alike to you. What an awesome God. Verse 13. For you formed the innermost parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I will give thanks and praise to you. For I am fearfully and wonderfully made. How precious are your thoughts to me, O oh God. How vast is the sum of them. If I could count them, they would outnumber the sand. When I wake up, I'm still with you. Oh, that you will kill the wicked. Oh, God. Go away from me. Therefore, men of bloodshed. For they speak against you wickedly. Your enemies take your name in vain. Do I not hate those who hate you? Oh, Lord. And do I not loathe those who rise up against you? I hate them with perfect and utmost hatred. They have become my enemies. Search me thoroughly, O oh God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. And see if there is any wicked or hurtful way in me. And lead me in the everlasting way. Can we all say amen? amen. That ends Chris' favorite hymn, um, hymn um, Psalms of the Bible. Praise the Lord. Now, I want to say something briefly based on what I've just said. Everybody sitting here, we are unique. You are so unique. I want you to have confidence in yourself and know that God brought you here for a purpose. I believe God is a wise creator. He made everything for a purpose. It is us, man, that always forget that God has a purpose for our lives. Oftentimes we think the purpose of our life is succeed in business, have a family, leave a legacy, and die and go. No. I'm telling you, no. I'm repeating, no. God brought you here so that through you, he can declare his glory. Did you hear what I just say? Hello? Are you hearing me? God wants to use you, 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 to declare his glory. And I'm saying this, blessed are all those who can see in themselves that they have a purpose to serve God and declare his glory. 
you were not just born by the desire of a mother and a father. God pre-planned your life. And I'm telling you, he pre-planned it very well that nobody can edit your life. Your life cannot be edited or re-edited by anybody. So tell your neighbor, neighbor, your life cannot be edited. And as God saw you in heaven before he brought you down here, that's how he, he will expect you coming back. Oftentimes we think God celebrates birthdays. Birthdays are for us men. When a baby is born, the family is happy. Everybody sing praise. But that's not what God is looking at. God is looking at the end of life. God wants you to come home with joy. You came from God and you have to go back to God. You're going back to God with, 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 with your assignment that he assigned you to do well done. God wants to receive each and every one back home by saying, well done, my son. This is what I'm bringing you to understand that your life was planned to serve God's purpose. And I thank God that Chris known his purpose and we are all talking about him. I heard all his friends, business partners telling him about how serious he is about God. And not only Chris alone should be serious about his God, but you too, you have to be serious about your God. It is my duty if a microphone is given to me to say a word, tell you that you were not born to eat, drink, dine, live a life and die and be buried for not serving God. God wants you to serve him and pray, Lord, help me. Help me to be a testimony of your glory so that one of these days, if me too, I could close my eyes, I can be said, well done, well done, well done. I want to read one scripture and then pray. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 11. I'm reading from King James. He said, he has made everything in his time. He has also set the world in your heart so that no man can find out the works that God made from. Praise God. The Amplified Version, which I love, says, he has made everything beautiful and appropriate in his time. He has also planted eternity, a sense of divine purpose, in human heart. The reason why I choose this verse is that you sitting there, God has placed eternity in your heart. God has a plan in your life. God is expecting that plan to be unfolded. And don't just say, I went to a party, the food was good, the music was great, Chris was well dressed, we enjoy ourselves, but take this with you. That God has placed eternity in my heart. Can we all say that part? A sense of divine purpose. A sense of divine purpose. Can I hear that? Friends, let's think about it. We can talk about Christ and everybody can talk about Christ. We cannot remove one thing, take one thing. We cannot hide one thing. A sense of divine purpose. It matters, brother. It matters a lot. It's worth a whole world that Christ has recognized that he has a sense of divine purpose in his heart. The Amplified continues, said, a mysterious longing which nothing under the sun can satisfy except God. Yet man cannot find out, comprehend, or grasp what God has done. His overall plan from the beginning to the end. I think when Chris was born, he was born like you and I, ordinary kid. But as I said, eternity was planted in his heart. Eternity is planted in your life. Eternity is planted in your heart. He began to love God. He took God seriously. Today he can testify about the goodness and the greatness of God. I want you to 
be happy with Chris. And if there's anything that we can look around him and appreciate God for, it is the sense of God's eternal plan planted in his life. I tell people, one thing I would hate in my life is being given a mic when somebody is dead and you tell me, preach his funeral when you don't know the person's life. And oftentimes, preachers love to sugarcoat lives. Oh, he was a good man. Oh, he was an angel. Hey, he was this. And we lie. I pray God help me not to lie. If you love God, I will tell the whole world you love God. You didn't know God, I will tell you, unfortunately, he did not know God. Maybe for you not knowing God can let someone know God. Today I'm so honored to stand here to testify about somebody who has known God and the Lord has been so good to him and the Lord has made him such a blessing that we all for all these years have been enjoying around him. May God richly continue to bless him and may God continue to bless all his associate business friends and all of you that came may God continue blessing you all can we all say amen, amen. let's all look up to Chris and wish him happy birthday brother Chris can we all happy birthday brother Chris birthday. amen and if Chris will mind, can you, can you stand by here? Let's all be on our feet as we say a word of prayer and bless him. Where is Sister Bami? Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's all be on our feet. Let's bow our heads. Where is Sister? Okay. Sister is attending to the baby, so let's pray. And let's bless God for this life that has been so blessing to each and every one. That has given us the occasion to be gathered here in this wonderful place, eating this wonderful meal. And bless God that the Lord will bless this entity and God make him blossom, prosper him in everything that he will do, that more of him will be unfolded to this world Heavenly Father in the name of Jesus we are standing together in this awesome place that you have chosen that your name be lifted up that your glory be seen that the testimony of your loving kindness be told we want to thank you for the life of a man. We want to thank you for the life of his wife. We want to thank you for their faith, for their devotion, for their commitment, for their humility, for their gratitude. Father, we want to thank you for blessing them and through them making many people a blessing. On this great day, Lord, we are looking up to you for more blessing. We thank you for what he went through last year. That your presence was there to tell him, Chris, it was just a trial. Your best is yet to come. Today we are celebrating his 60th. Father, we can trust you for his 70th, for his 80th, for his 90th, and even for his 100th, if you will tarry. This we pray, Lord. Make him a blessing. Strengthen him, Lord. Reveal yourself to him on a daily basis, Lord. Instruct him, Lord God. Inspire him, Lord God. Make him fruitful in everything that he do. So that you alone will be glorified. We pray against all the dirty plans of the enemy against his life. 
We are human beings, Lord. We live in an unknown world. But the God who knows everything, he's the one that we have trusted our lives with. Father, watch over him by day, by night, in the snow, in the rain, in the office, at home, leisure times, everywhere, Lord. Your grace and your mercy be bestowed upon the family as you bless him, the wife, the baby, the entire family in the wonderful and most precious name of our dear Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we all pray and say amen. So God bless you and happy birthday, Pastor Chris. Amen. God bless you. You may have your seats. Yeah, Chris want to say something before we dance. So he sit down and let's hear him. Come on. Come on, Lord. God bless you. <sighs> um, just give me a moment to take all this in. And, uh, it's still very unreal. Very, very unreal because... Uh, I'm still hoping to wake up and find out whether it's, whether it's, it's real, all the people I'm seeing, the faces. And as much as I pinch myself, I open eyes and I see the same people. Then I'm trying to, not to be an unbeliever, but to believe that it's real. So first of all, I can't thank you all for being here, honestly, in my heart. Um, I, I couldn't have asked for anything else in, in life than being with all of you today. And I'm not, excuse me, because I'm not used to being center of attention. And, up to today, I still say, even when I stand up, have to, to preach, I'm still very nervous after this many years. But today, I want to, if you give me a moment to let you in into my life a little bit, so you can actually see beyond what you're seeing today. And the reason I'm saying that because Jerry, my younger brother here, which I'm proud to say I'm two months older than him. <laughs> so, but the pastor was speaking about, you know, something divine, divine connection. And I wanted to go back to that testimony we've shared many times and both of us, how we met. And as he said, um, was born in Nigeria, growing up in Biafran side. I was five years so when the war started. I'm saying that because I know there are people on this table who can relate to that. And from the area I came from, where it was the war between North, Northern Nigeria and Eastern Nigeria, basically. And uh, many of all, my family lived in the Northern side. So when the war started, we had to run back to the south. And we lost everything in that process. Uh, my father, who was in business, at that long time ago, had trucks and all those things, they were lost. And the one that came down to the south, the Biafran army took it over for the war. And we had nothing, we lost everything. And for three years, we had no home. And in those three years of hunger and disease, so to make it sure you're actually looking at someone who basically survived Kwashoko. That was how it was then. And many people, some people here can relate to that. That's why I'm turning to this place. But after three years of 
running from place to place. It got to a point that we were running from, things got so bad it was survival of the fittest. We were running from the Nigerian army and we were running from Biafran army. And at that point in time, my parents decided that the best thing is to go back home. If we are going to die, let's die than where we were staying at that time. But God's mercy saved us that when we came home, they actually the Nigerian army welcomed us home in my town. And they were supplying us, they were giving us soup, canned soup, corned beef, that was donated or brought there by UNICEF. And the memory of those, those days you can never take it away from me. Many times people have told me, in fact, my family told me to write a book because all the books about that war is all the, on the eyes of the generals and the decision makers. The childhood experience, many people don't know that. And the generation that are coming after us don't even know that. So it's a different perspective. But the reason I brought that up is that when I met him, and he said, he asked me where I came from and we began to talk. He said he remembered that while he was in primary, in elementary school, they were asked to donate soup and food, canned food, for Biafran children that are suffering. So I said, you know, I may have eaten one of those canned soup. Nobody will ever know which of the soup, the can soup that I ate <laughs> to be alive. But here we are today and we're connected since then. So our relationship runs deeper than, than that and what we see. But I'm just giving you an, uh, an idea of who I am. That after the war, we, my, my parents lost everything they had. We had to start afresh. Um, about a couple of years after that, my father died because he just couldn't take it. Seeing his children, there was no money to go to school. That was a man that was doing very well, and you can imagine what that is. So that added to our suffering. And somehow, God's grace sustained us, and I am here, I am today. That I was telling someone, I always say that I was 10 years old when I first saw electricity. And I was that, it was that same year that I first saw a water system toilet. I was sick, they took me to Koe Hospital in Enugu. And I went there and they, I said I wanted to use the bathroom and they showed me the bathroom and I went there, it was this white bowl. And I said, what do I do here? <laughs> Never seen it before. And then they told me what to do. And where I was coming from, we didn't have water. So when I finished and I pressed the button and the water started flowing, I thought I broke it because of the noise. Because of the amount of water that was coming. But today I'm in IT. But think of that. From not knowing what electricity is. And that's... So the courage, I just wanted to give you an idea of how much I appreciate life. The life that I have, the people around me, and I always live a very grateful life. Not because of what I have, but where I'm coming from. And the friends that God has used along the way to give me favor, to show me, to help me along the way. All these people sitting here, uh, what God I used to help me along the way. My brethren, my friends, my colleagues, my wife, and all, all the people that surround me daily. It's very difficult to take that all in. But I just want to tell you that I appreciate all of you. You know, one thing I have always prayed for, and I say that I, don't, I never ask God for long life. I don't. I ask God for strength every day. 
ask God for a good life. But I know that if I have strength, I will live long. So instead of asking for a long life, I ask for strength in life. And I can testify today that God never fails to answer that. Because I can get up. I can get up this now. I can call myself an elder. I was just telling my wife, you say, she, we were saying something, say, I told her, I know, I can't remember where we are. He said, oh, get up and go there. I said, they have to get up and see me because I'm an elder now. <laughs> but, you know, what makes you an elder is you, you come to a point where you realize that sometimes you have to acknowledge that you are not here to change the world. There are, this, there are just certain things that you never get to do. And then I was thinking that the older I get, the wiser I get. But I came to find out after a while that the older I get, the more I found out what I don't know. And I found out that that's actually wisdom. That the older you get, you find out what you don't know. And that actually makes you wise. And it makes you choose wisely. Why? Because it makes you choose your fight wisely. There are certain things that's not worth fighting for. And um, I just want to, I, I don't know how to talk about my wife, um, who is the I call her the, the jewel on the crown of my head. Because whatever I am today and whatever you see about us is about her. I don't know how she does what she does. I just can't put it together. And she put it right. All I do is support. I can't figure it out. Just like I couldn't figure out this one. How is it that you're living with someone? <laughs> Let me not go there then. You get what I mean. How she's able to do this behind my back. <laughs> and we always boast about this in how we work together talk about everything, always in the same bed. She always does this behind me. <laughs> but it's a good thing, because only her can do that. I can't. Because when I wanted to do her birthday, I needed her. <laughs> but when she wants to do my birthday, she doesn't need me. But she said, wonder, how did this play out? Just as she's saying, anything she says her mind to do, she's going to do it. In the midst of all the things she said she wanted to go for the study for the fellow, as a fellow of um, Academy of uh, General Dentistry. And I said, go ahead. I will support. That's all I can do. And she passed it. And um, couple of, uh, last year, we couldn't do the induction this year. Last weekend, we were in Austin to do the induction. And then in the process, she was elected as the president of uh, Bergen County Dental Association. So that requires another maybe induction. I don't know how to get that. But when she told me there is an event that we are attending today on Saturday, so I said, OK. Must be the dental association. <laughs> and she let me think that way. So even when we are coming here, I was thinking I'm going to be among dentists. Yeah, actually, I said, I said okay, I'm going to be a bunch of doctors there. I said, okay, because I wanted to know where we were going. But when she said a bunch of, that's okay, doctors, I'll 
it's dental thing, so what do you expect? <laughs> but I just want to thank her. I can't thank her enough. And I can't praise her enough. But I will not forget also to thank our little boy, Jedidiah. Now they are just bringing him in, who is here also. It's an addition to our life, and we're just... Now look at him, raising up his hands. <laughs> I want to thank the people on this table, everyone there, and all of you, especially my colleagues. These people I work with every day. I see them every day, you know, uh, uh, in the IT business. That's how I put it. But there is something that transpired I wanted to bring on because I have conversation with them. Here's uh, Mike Sovis, uh, um, who has always been a very good friend all this while. But I was talking with someone um, um, in the office this week, um, Rich Covello. You know, he studies, he reads all kinds of stuff. So I learned from him a lot. And we spent time talking, uh, I think it was on Tuesday, and um, he said something, and I, I was laughing. I said, you are very funny. He said, no, you don't know. I'm not funny until you meet my wife. I said, okay, what's special about your wife? He said, let me tell you one thing my wife did. I said, okay, go ahead. He said, my wife was going to have a surgery. And you know when you have surgery, the last moment they bring this document where you sign your life away, and you consent to everything. He said, the last line there, they said, if there's an emergency and you need the last right, who do we call? A rabbi, pastor, imam, or priest? She looked at them and says, if he gets to that point, call them all. And, and I just, and, and I remember that because my wife was talking about what happened to me in September and my thoughts and everything went through that, that we always, I'm always conscious of our humanity. I'm always conscious of my mortality. I'm always conscious of how temporal this place is. And everyone has to be conscious of that, regardless of what your inclination is. We have to be conscious that we are here for a moment. And I always pray, as I said before, I don't ask for long life, but I ask for enough time to do what God put me here to do. And I also say, I don't want one day, one moment, beyond the time appointed for me in this place. I don't want one moment. Because I've lived long enough and seen much suffering of humanity. That there is actually gets to a point when you have to say, I'm better off off. And that's brought me to that conclusion. But as long as I have that hope, it drives everything I do and how I relate to people, regardless of their state. And that's what I ask all of you today, as you celebrate with me today, to think of that. What will be? It's not how much we achieve. It's the influence we have on others. And the testimony that we hold out of this place is how much we left in people, how much we deposit in people, the love that we deposit in people. And you have shown me your love today, and I will never forget it, and I'm always going to appreciate every one of you. And I say God bless you, and thank you. And thank my wife. Thank you for coming. Thank you.
Forever and ever. 